made your indoor lacrosse on the deuce. If you change the channel, we'll use your poodle as a pincushion. Tonight, Baltimore thunders into Joe Louis Arena to blow out the turbos. This is Detroit, the Motor City, where the Turbos are looking to assemble a two-victory season sweep over the winless Baltimore Thunder. In their first meeting of the season, Detroit was running on all cylinders and won convincingly, fueled by the Wild Bunch. Don't call out the tow truck just yet on the Thunder, but they better jumpstart their offensive batteries tonight. They are second to last in the league in offense and last in defense. And unfortunately tonight, they won't be running on premium. They're without all-star defenseman Dave Petromala and Bill Durgel. There's one thing for sure, when these teams meet, hey, it's crash test dummy time. Welcome to Detroit, our first stop in the Motor City as the Deuce continues its coverage of the major indoor lacrosse league. I'm Lee Felsman, along with Christy Lee. We're going to bring you all the action tonight. Now, if you follow us the last two weeks, you've seen two major upsets. Tonight's game is equally critical. Playoff implications for both teams. And let me tell you why. Last night, the Boston Blazers beat the New York Saints 14-7. Charlie Blanchard is the game MVP, three goals, two assists. What this does is put Boston in position to still win the National Division. They are going against these same Turbos and the Buffalo Bandits. But look at Detroit at 4-1, tied with the defending champions. They're in the driver's seat. If they win tonight, they'll be in sole possession of first place in the National Division, the first team to do that other than Buffalo in the last two years. It's still important for Baltimore in the American Division. They're 0-5, but the last two games of the season are against the New York Saints. The New York Saints are 1-5, Baltimore feels like they have to win at least one game before that two-game series with New York for the last playoff spot if they're going to have a realistic chance. Now let's go back to the home team. Detroit has been successful all year, predominantly because of the play of the Wild Bunch. Talented players, three of them, and none more talented than leading goal scorer Ted Dallin. Thanks, Leaf. We're back here in the dark, dingy corridors of the locker room behind Joe Louis Arena, just about ready to get started. The fans are pumped up, we're pumped up, and with me, Detroit Turbo star Ted Dowling. First of all, Ted, we have to address your hair. You've gone from hippie to yuppie on us. What's the deal, man? I decided it was time for a change. Uh, the locks were just too long and getting them away, so I had to get a cut. Were the guys grabbing you? Yeah, the hippie yuppie thing came out pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Well, you've had a wonderful season. The team is playing really well. You could end up on the top of your division with a win tonight over Baltimore. You've done it once. How are you going to do it again? Just play great defense and a lot of shots on net, and hopefully they'll go in. Well, you've already been picked the player of the month by the Major Indoor Lacrosse League, and we didn't have enough time to really put together a trophy for you, but we do have a special presentation to make. Ladies and gentlemen, Ted, this is your own personal Coors Light Girl Sue for the evening. You get her. <laughs> Just kidding, really. No, Ted's going to take Sue. He's going to get out on the field. We're going to have a great time, and we're going to throw in the rock. Coming up next on the Deuce. Tonight's major indoor lacrosse league game on the Deuce is brought to you by Coors Light, the official beer of the M-I-L-L. -L. Coors Light, check it out. By Adidas, the official footwear of the M-I-L-L. -L. Adidas, the brand with three stripes. And by STX Lacrosse Equipment, official equipment supplier to the Detroit Turbos. Think of all this as a large block of ice. Think of this as a chip off the old block. Coors Light's aged ice cold. So when you think of ice, think of the silver bullet. The only way to chill. They're always working on something new. That's why everyone who's serious about lacrosse plays with sticks equipment. My mother uses a stick. With sticks, you'll score more goals. Probably a thousand, hundred thousand, million. The people at sticks know the sport. The lacrosse players. The lacrosse players. I think my brother Paul works at sticks. Every goal we scored was stick sticks. Sure do. Can't say any more about it.
Even with baseball over, working out will always be a part of my life. And when I get sore, I take Advil. To last, you stick with what works. And Advil has always worked for me. Advil, advanced medicine for pain. If the big head iron can do this with two balls, imagine what it can do with just one. Double your sweet spot. Call 1-800-BIG-HEAD. Let's take a look at the face-to-face. -face. A key matchup tonight, Jeff Jackson. Action Jackson, three-time All-Pro, comes in with seven goals. And Dwayne Jacob, one of the wild bunch. He is incredible. He is perfectly balanced. Eight goals, seven assists. He'll be tough to watch tonight. Steve Dietrich, the best stopper in the league, in one goal. That's for Detroit. And the other goal, David Lee for Baltimore. He will be the focus for the defense. David Lee with the worst save percentage in the league. He has to come up big tonight. Here he comes out of the goal in the opening faceoff. He's out, and he gets saved by Kronberger. But watch David Lee in the goal for this black, white, our black, yellow, and red team from Baltimore. He will have to come up big if Baltimore is going to have a chance tonight to win. They get the opening faceoff. The David Lee's aggressive defensive move. This is Lindsey Dixon, the leading goal scorer, starting the offense. The key for this team from Baltimore is aggressiveness, and they do push it right into the cylinder to start the offense. Watch this team from Baltimore, who is backed up against the wall. They feel they must win tonight. Watch for them to be aggressive on both ends of the field. They'll push the defense. Now they set up for their first defense, the turbos on offense. Watch Baltimore to double team early. There it is, double team now. Comes in close, a shot over the net. And a push call. Might be a foul. Looks like a foul. We're going to have a man in the penalty box already. And that's Terry Bullen, team captain. The ball goes behind. Watch as they pick it up. Bullen comes from behind and just rockets the Baltimore Thunder man into the board. So Bullen comes into the penalty box for two minutes. And it'll be Baltimore with a man advantage. David Lee picks up the ball, gives it to Lindsey Dixon, number 12 for Baltimore. This is the first power play of the game. We are just into the first quarter. Leif Elsmo, Christy Lee on the deuce. Dixon comes in tight, the four man short unit for the Turbos, one of the best in the league. Over to Jeff Wills down low, back up to Dixon. He looks for all his options, takes it up top, and it bounces off of Steve Dietrich. Keep it down, All the way back is Jeff Wills in the hole as Mueller comes down, asks for the ball. Goes to Rosa, number 13. Mueller's way down deep. They will switch players now, Detroit will. A minute 30 left on the penalty, a lot of time as Ted Dowling, leading goal scorer, number 19, gives it off to the far side. Sacconi now tries to find a cutting player, and the ball is loose. Dowling picks it up, controls again. 30 second shot clock, down to two. Goalie. That shot he on tried. goal resets it, but Baltimore trying to pick it All up. Right. It's still loose. Great job by Kevin Dance, number 17. A lot of pressure put on by the man All down right. unit. Dixon now brings the ball up. Tries to pick, swing it into the offense. It picked off immediately by Detroit. They've done a good job of taking away any effective shot for Baltimore. Now Baltimore has to take advantage of those power play opportunities. 0-5 as they come into this game. Dowling across to Pete Park, and they couldn't get the shot off. They're a man down. Baltimore still up for 39 more seconds. They're 5-1-4. Here they come. The Thunder running down. Curry looks to the wing, gives it off. Jackson couldn't pick up the ball, and the 28 seconds left in the penalty. Loose ball push goes back to Baltimore. They still will get a shot. 26 seconds on the penalty, 30 on the shot clock. They haven't had a good shot yet. Outside, Marino takes one, Rockets, and he's got rope. Great shot, the crowd stunned by that shot. Marino, Still uneven. shooter's right hand up top. Number 66, Still he's uneven. on the U.S. national team. Here he goes, low shot, he doesn't even go corner, right in the old five guys, hole. Directly overhead, you'll see Dieter come out, blocks the area, but left a little bit on, right please. between the legs, and that's what Marino found. Great velocity of what Marino shot, one of the hardest shooters in the game, right in the old five hole, right next to his stick, as he's down there trying to make the block. One nothing, Baltimore with the early lead. These two teams met the first game of the season. We showcased that game on the deuce, 15 to eight. Detroit won that game, but it was Baltimore up four goals to nothing to start that game. They had a great first quarter, and here comes Detroit. One no one is the Turbos tie it up within 30 seconds of the first goal.
Turbo is applying big pressure. Here he comes around the front. This is Dwayne Jacobs. Ducks inside the defense in tight on David Lee and just bounces that one in. First goal for Detroit. That one ties it at one apiece. Jacobs, we talked about him in the face-to-face. -face. One of the wild bunch. And they can score from a lot of different areas on the offense of the Detroit Turbos. Again, playing for first place, they would be the first team, Detroit would, if they win tonight, to be in first place in the National Division other than Buffalo in the last two years. Turbos lead the series 5-2. to two. The Turbos have won the last five. They didn't play last year at all, and they opened up the season, as I mentioned, this year. But last year, no games between these two, two, these two teams. 11-22 left in quarter number one. One to one all the right. score in tight. Baltimore now pushing the offense. Ricky Freed comes in looking to dish it off. Jackson on the far side. He's got rope. Beautiful job set up by Ricky Jackson. Or Jeff Jackson by Ricky Freed, I should say. There's number five, Jeff Jackson. He gets the goal. And Ricky Freed sets it up. It'll go deep into the left side, at the Jackson on the right, and right past Dietrich. Watch Dietrich slide left to right. He's not in position, and it gets right inside his right arm. Dietrich, watch free, make Dietrich go pipe to pipe. Dietrich sliding, not fast enough. Great redirect by Jeff Jackson to give Baltimore a two to one lead. We're in the first quarter, 10.50 left. Baltimore with the two to one lead. They are playing as if it is all on the line tonight. Pete Park, he is so tough in close if he gets the ball down low. Nothing but power against Vince Gotti, number 11. Gets it off to the wing. Mueller inside, watch out, Bullen, Bullen comes in. David Lee makes the big save. Lee gobbles it up, but Bullen really crunched that one right down the middle. Big save for David Lee. Baltimore back on the attack, two to one. They lead in the first quarter. Martino trying to dish it down low and cut off. They'll try to get a lot of picks. Here comes Lindsey Dixon, he's got a shot, and the ball goes wide. Dixon had a real good shot. They're getting good offense. Canabine, a good looking rookie. Ball coming down to Bull and he can't pick it up and David Lee picks up the loose ball. The transition game so important to Detroit, but Baltimore right away back to their offensive end. Again, the first game this year, four to nothing, four to nothing in the first quarter of the lead for Baltimore and that was blown with a big second quarter by Detroit. In tight again, but a big save by Dietrich. He's getting better every moment. You'll be able to hear Roy Condon, the head referee. We have him mic'd for the game. Dance comes in, dishes off to Adam Mueller. Mueller comes in, looks to pass. No, he'll take a shot. And a big deflection by the goalie Lee. Still two to one, Baltimore in the black, yellow, and red. The Turbos in purple, the home team looking to be the first team in the National Division with a win tonight. They're tied with Buffalo right now, the defending champions of Major My League time, Lacrosse. my time! My time! Back at Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit. Lee Felsmo and Christy Lee. Baltimore, you see, with a two to one lead. It's early though. Driscoll comes in, looks for Wild Bunch Partners over to Goyle. He's looking for a shot into the corner, but a great save by David Lee. He's a streaky goalie. Doesn't have a great save percentage, but he is capable of having a great game. He has to get off to the fast start, like most goalies. They need that confidence builder. Now picked up by Klotzen. Jeff Clodson looking for help. Gives it off to a fresh line coming onto the field. Christy Lee is on the sideline. That's right, Leaf, down here on the Detroit Turbos bench. Leaf, as you know, before the game, we had a chance to talk with Shane Sanderson, the head coach of the Detroit Turbos. We asked him about beating Baltimore. He said his team is doing what they are asked to do. They play as a team. There's no one-star player, and they feel that they are very confident coming into this game. No matter how far down, and they're only down by one goal, they always come back. They always heed the call, and that's what they plan on doing here tonight. 
Well, you're absolutely right, Christy. They do have the confidence of a champion, and that has been built over the success of this season. Four and one entering this game. They've only got it's three right, it's games right. left. It's a tough schedule after this one with Baltimore. Detroit reloading the offense now as they work around the outside. John Lancey looking for help. Lancey picking it up this whole way by himself. Leahy down for the free playing defense for Baltimore. Shot clock expires. 30 seconds. You've got to hit the four by four and a half foot goal. Good look at David Lee and Shane Sanderson, the coach of Detroit. Only his second year, but boy, he has really put it together in his second campaign here in Detroit. Wills comes in, the great left hand, the Hopkins All-American gets it checked out of his stick. And now here comes the fast break. Dowling, number 19, looks for a new line coming in. They change. Usually two runs, one offense, one defense, and you'll get a fresh line on the field. Terry Bullen looking for help. He's tired. Again, the defense for Baltimore is to be a lot more aggressive than in the past. That's the coaching instructions. Bounce shot off the backboard. It went high into the back of the net. Cloudson is looking for the fast break, but it's whistled dead. And it'll be given. I see a stop in the action. Stay over there. Let's get the call. All right, we've got a penalty on Paul Cantabine over here. of Baltimore. An elbow up high. If you go above the shoulder, you'll get the two-minute penalty. So Cantabine in the box for two minutes. It'll be a power play for the Turbos. Meredith up top, takes the shot. And Jim Meredith will be the trigger man. Ball goes back to Baltimore. Loose up front, Dowling trying to get it. And Gotti pulls it down. Baltimore uses a defensive line. And Gotti is on it, Curry's on it. And you'll see a lot of the players out here for the man down unit. They just dump it up the field, try to burn up valuable time. A minute 30 left in the penalty. So they used up 30 seconds. Detroit had a good shot, though. They got it in very tight. Meredith, number 14, will trigger from up top. Looks behind him. Now up to the right-handed shot. Back to Meredith. He's got help, and he just elects to take the shot. Rushed aside by David Lee. Back to Meredith. He's got Dwayne Jekyll for the left hand. Again, he takes it from up front. He thinks he's got the shot. Hasn't really been that accurate with it. David Lee looking for an outlet. He's a man short on his end of the field. It's Detroit, five players against the four. This is Ben Zangatti looking for help. Zangatti with the good wheels. Here he goes. And a delay to clear. You've got to clear it within 10 seconds in your own defensive zone. They failed to do that. It goes back to Detroit with just under a minute left on the penalty to Canabine. Jacobs hasn't had the ball on that left side yet. Meredith now gives it. No, bypasses Jacobs down to Dowling. And TD puts in his first goal of the game. A wild bunch making an impact as Jacobs gets one early on, and so does Dowling. Two to two, the turbos tie it up. Look how far out David Lee is. David Lee way out of position. They get it down low to Dowling, and Dowling just dishes it over. Big goal, all tied at two. If you can't wait, you need the News Weekly of Motoring, Auto Week. If you can't wait for driving impressions, get Auto Week. Auto Week drives them all and tells you about them first. If you can't wait for car news, get Auto Week. Auto Week covers it all. The great old cars, the auto shows. Auto Week's columnists are controversial and fast. And if you can't wait for racing news, get the News Weekly of Motoring. Auto Week races to bring you the winningest coverage first. If you can't wait, get Auto Week. The News Weekly of Motoring, now. Call 1-800-233-0500 for a full year. 52 issues at the special TV price of $19.95. Just 38 cents an issue. Save $80 off the cover price. You've thought about it. Stop waiting. Do it now. Call 1-800-233-0500 for the News Weekly of Motoring. We're in the first quarter. Two to two the score. The Turbos coming back to tie it. The Wild Bunch making a big impact. Ted Dowling scoring the second goal. Dwayne Jacobs the first. Baltimore has had both leads. They scored first one nothing, then two to one. Detroit now looking for the first lead of the game for them. Ted Dowling looks all the way across, tries to find Leahy. Leahy can't pick it up. Defense by Matt Wilson. All the way up front, Lancey. John Lancey looking for room, can't get it. The aggressive defense by Wilson again. Welsh now picks up the loose ball. Fakes Leahy. 
moves it up, he'll get it off the field. Here comes the fast break. Wills, no rope for him. Off wide, wide. Backed up beautifully on the play by Paul Cadabine. Cadabine, the good looking rookie. Martino, all the way in close. Wills with a big fake left hander, had no angle. Tried to pull it back to the inside of the cylinder. And Rosa, I believe, will get a two minute call. That'll be it. John Rosa is going to spend two minutes in the box. Watch Will's left hander. He tries to pull his left hand over to the inside to get a better angle. It, Can't really get the better you angle. And Dietrich just stands his ground to make the save. Two minutes. Two minutes. So much more target against that small 18 square feet when you pull your stick to the zone to the inside of the shooting area. Dixon now, the second power play for Baltimore. He'll trigger from up top. Big shot from up high. That's Wills. Now here comes Adam Mueller. Mueller defense by Wills. And Mueller with a slam dunk off the pipe. Marino picks it up. Tepper's flaring a little bit. 16 on the Rose has got a minute 40 left on his penalty. And take a look at this. Shot in right off the top of the iron. David Lee blocking a beautiful shot by Mueller. Watch him protect it with his body. Comes in nothing left but a one-handed slam dunk. Almost got it. Hit the iron, bounced out wide. He's got the ball. Well, two minute penalty on Jeff Wills on that very play. Wills was defending Adam Mueller. Wills gets two minutes in the penalty box. So, teams will be four against four, at least for the next minute 40. And that's when John Rosa will go back to give Detroit the advantage. Right now, four players against all the jerseys and shorts. Four players. Ball loose, watch out. Second. Pony gets it. Whistle blows the action dead. Hold call. Ball goes back to Baltimore. Number nine. All right, this is going to be Pete Park going to the box. So this will be a four on three. Watch Pete Park. Pete Park comes in, absolutely pulls down the player. So Pete Park, number nine, will go into the penalty box. We're losing players right and left, folks. Now we're down to four on three. So it's still a one player advantage for Baltimore. Lindsey Dixon with a lot of room. He's got a lot of green out there. And a busy penalty box. Gets it down low. Again, it's four players, so it kind of moves things around differently. Great save by Dietrich. Looks for the outlet. Dietrich only 5-7 up to Lindsey Dixon playing defense. Dietrich just dishes it way up, giving Baltimore a long run back if they want to get a good shot. Dixon takes his time. And down defense for the Turbos. Pat Coyle, number six up front. 28's Terry Bullen. And behind them, Adam Mueller, 16. All the way across for the big shot with the right hand was Marino, but again smothered by Dietrich. Big save, and he has looked sharp. Both goalies playing on top of their game here in quarter number one. Two, 30 left. We're still in the first. Major Dorland Cross League action on the deuce. Baltimore playing for the first win of the season, trying to get into the playoffs. They can still do it mathematically if they don't win tonight, but they feel like they need a win going into the last two games against New York to have a realistic chance. Big shot from out top. That's Driscoll, the only member of the Wild Bunch that hasn't scored yet. Now down to Marino. He's got a slam dunk opportunity. He fakes the right-handed shot, waits for help. Trailing player is Jackson, but he misses Jackson. Goes all the way back to Lindsey Dixon. Over and back is the call. Once you get it in the offensive end, you cannot send it back. It's like a stalling call. So amidst all this confusion, no score, still two to two, with less than two minutes to go in the first. I've got two players in this penalty box. Loose ball's virtually even, and that is a key. B Park still in for 26 seconds. Detroit looking for an open player. Driscoll comes around looking for help. Oh, defense of Clodson wrapping up Ciccone. And the shot clock, 30 seconds, expires, giving the ball to Baltimore. 126 left. Only six, five, four, three seconds left on Pete Park as he'll come onto the field to even the game. They're all even now. Park is on. The AstroTurf surface. Go over here to play Tim Welsh. Tim Welsh played by Coyle. Welsh, very strong, great shooter. 
Welsh comes in, tries the left-handed shot, no angle, but enough to get it in the old five hole between the legs of Dietrich. He finds possession. Over to Rosa, and now here comes the offense for Detroit. I think you get the feeling, as I do, that this is a fast-paced game. Both teams taking it to the offense, not waiting around, pushing the tempo pretty hard. Ted Dowling can't pick it up cleanly from John Rosa. Here comes Baltimore. Can they get it clean? No. John Lancey beats him back. Lancey tries to get it up to Rosa. Rosa all alone. It's three on one. Down to Dowling. Dowling across. Big save by David Lee. The best save of the game. Sensational three on one. Stopped by David Lee. Baltimore back with the big, oh, Gravante gets hammered from behind. Tom Gravante made one fake and got nailed. The great player from Hobart made one big fake, went into the cylinder, and the trailing player from Detroit absolutely leveled him. 10 seconds left. It's all tied in the first quarter, and that's the way it might end up. They might get one more shot. Meredith now tries to get it behind, picked up by David Lee. Not enough time to get any offense, and that'll end the first quarter. Both teams even putting it all on the line. Two to two at the end of the first. We'll be back to the deuce in just a moment. As the amount you spend with your Discover card goes up, your interest rate goes down with the Smart Rate program. So use the Discover card where the percentages are always in your favor. And when it comes to smart rate, it pays to look for your pre-approved Discover Card application. Sign it and send it back, because you can't get smart rate until you get your card. It pays to discover the card that pays you back. OK, so I tend to put things off. For me, the time just has to be right. Like, I meet this amazing girl, and she's coming over. Tonight, <laughs> it, it's like with Rogaine. I've been meaning to check it out. This is important to me. I've thought about calling lots of times. You know when I called? Today. This was my time. It could be your time, too. To find out more about Rogaine with Minoxidil, call this 800 number now. You'll get a free information kit filled with facts to help answer your questions about Rogaine. And since you need a prescription to get Rogaine, you'll also get a list of local doctors offering a free private consultation to help you decide if Rogaine is right for you. So call today. Hi. Hi. Nice place. Call now 1-800-433-8666 for a free information kit. Nothing but deuces back here at Joe Lewis. Baltimore 2, Detroit 2, second quarter on the deuce. Lee Felsmo, Christy Lee getting set to face off. Number six, Paul Canabine for Baltimore. And number 23, John Lancey for Detroit. Face off controlled by Kronberger. So Canabine from Loyola to Kronberger from Loyola. The Loyola connection controls the ball. Now they try to get some offense. Curry from Syracuse all the way across the other way. The shot bounces off. Martino could not find the net. Dietrich makes the big save. First quarter, shots in the favor of Baltimore. Loose balls all tied and faceoffs controlled by Detroit. Each team scores two goals. Each team scores a power play goal. So these teams are evenly matched here at Joe Lewis. The scenario again, Baltimore playing to get first one win as they move into a potential playoff battle with New York. Detroit, if they win tonight, will move into first place by themselves ahead of the defending champion, Buffalo Bandits. Bullet with a hard shot, swept away by David Lee. And David Lee looks very strong. Canabine now, the good looking alone, rookie. Grandpa, nothing chief, leave it alone. And Roy Condit controlling the action. We'll have him mic'd again. You'll hear him call it out all day long. Canabine has had a sensational season, seven goals coming into the game. Now, a fresh line in, rookie free, the veteran. Gives it to Welsh, and they have a rotation now Mar Marino up top. Jackson in close. Jackson with a near side oh, shot close. just misses the Go net. The Looking for hard. rope, and he could it. not find it. He had a sensational move to get him in for that left-handed shot and just absolutely missed. Look at the rope wide open. Gets past Park, pulls back, and has the corner and goes a little bit high. Great move by Jackson, but nothing to show for it. Detroit. 
playing very physical on defense, and now it's their chance to ignite an offensive push. Low scoring game. These teams average 13 goals for Detroit and about 10 goals for the Baltimore guys. Thunder. Out front, watch out, trying to pick it up. They could not get it to Dwayne Jacobs. The ball pushed up, picked up now, loose by Kevin Dance. Dance takes the shot, no angle, bounces off the boards and backed up beautifully by Chris Driscoll. The Wild Bunch Driscoll cannot get it into the goal before the 30-second shot clock. You know, a couple stars are not playing for the Baltimore Thunder, and Christy Lee has one that has another retirement on his belt. That's right, Leaf. Joining me now on the Baltimore Thunder bench is John Tucker, former player, then coach, then player. Then now you're back doing the assistant coaching job. You had an injury earlier in the season. But we want to talk about, of course, your team and getting into the playoff picture. This win is critical for you, tied up at two games, or two apiece here with Detroit. Tell us, John, exactly how you're going to beat this Detroit team. Um, I think we uh, need to continue to play good defense. David's really playing well in the net. And uh, if we can, get, I think we, if we can get to 10 to 12 goals, we can win the game. Great. Well, unfortunately, it looks like we've already just had a score from Detroit, which makes it three to two. But John, we'll be talking with you throughout the game, and good luck to your Thunder. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Dowling scores his second goal, second straight goal. The Wild Bunch on fire. Jacob scored the first goal for Detroit. Now Dowling with two. Watch this one go right down low. A rocket shot that comes up and hits rope. David Lee playing sensationally so far. Sir. Assistant coach John Tucker talked about it, and he is right. David Lee has played very well. That shot, maybe one he normally would save, that gives Detroit the first lead of the game, three to two. Anybody's game, though, is Butch Marino comes down, number 66. He's a member of the national team that will play for the World Championship in England in July of this year. Checked out beautifully by Leahy. Lately, he playing today for Derek Graham of the Detroit team. And now here comes Detroit. They dish it off, trying to get it running. Here comes Dowling. Dowling over to Lemon. Can't get it past Ricky Freed. Freed played great position defense. And now Marino all alone on Dietrich looking for Rowe. He's got it. Beautiful job by Marino with the two fakes and behind the back of Dietrich. Marino ties it up at three with 11.52 left in the oh, second. No, the Thunder on a rocket roll. Hey, Sam, what's going on? Not a whole lot with me. I thought I'd go over there and ask Mike. Hey, guys, I heard there's a spilled Coca-Cola near the stairs. Oh, yeah? Shh. Yeah, I mean, why don't we all get in the line and not cruise over there? I love Coca-Cola. What do you say? Let's go. Hey, Mike, tell everyone there's a whole Coca-Cola by the stairs, and we're starting a line. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, God, 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 the hey, always Coca-Cola. Tomorrow night, 7.30, the Dallas Stars take on the Philadelphia Flyers. We are at the Joe Louis Arena in Detroit for major indoor lacrosse league action. All tied up, Detroit three, Baltimore three, a must win for the Baltimore Thunder. And Christy, these teams are well matched. The score indicates that they're pretty much balanced so far in this game. We're about a third of the way through, 10.25 left in the second quarter. Dietrich with another great save, power play. Timeout called by Skip Lickfuss. He got another play in there for the power play, but still not a real effective shot against Dietrich. Ricky Freed there, good shot at him, number four. Check wild, and Rosa now gets off the floor. Ciccone still in the box for 47 seconds. They'll have another shot. Wills looking for a stick. Wills, the shooter from the left-hand side, not in position. So Dixon has nothing to throw to. Now he does. Wills looks back to Dixon, back to Wills. Left-handed shot. Doesn't have it, down to Ricky Freed up top. Here's Marino's cannon. Big save by Dietrich, he can't find the handle. The ball goes back, finally gets the rock in the stick. Off to the wing. And now picked up by Pat Coyle. 
that'll uh, take him down to 20 seconds left in this penalty. Turbo's 11 goals per game. Best in the middle as far as defense is concerned. They allow 11 per game. Very stingy on the defensive end, and they talk about their success starting from the defensive end. Shane Sanderson says, we've got to play great defense to continue our success. The first foul! Dixon now comes down as Ciccone comes in all even, looking to get the fast break, but Welsh was too low. A lot going on with the referees. You hear Roy Condon, he is miked on the field. Along with Bruce Crawford, Dave Berman, that's the three referee pack. Driscoll comes in with a shot, checked out by Clodson, goes up wide. David Lee will start the outlet to Ricky Freed. Fresh line comes on for Baltimore. Three to three, 847 left from Joe Lewis, Lee Fells, Mo Christie, Lee on the deuce. Paul Canopy, the good looking rookie from Loyola, going against the defense of Brian Lemon. Lemon came to Detroit from Baltimore several years ago. Canabine looking for the right-handed shot, takes it and bounces it off of the midsection of Dietrich. Hard check going in as Harms can't pick it up. Push call to go back to Baltimore, but Driscoll with some hustling. Brian Lemon has to go back. Number 25, he's tired. Let's see if they can take advantage of that. Lemon's been on the field for a while. He's joined by some, some fresh legs on that line. They cannot pick it up. Finally, Gravante does. Looks in close, and Marino dunks it in. In the crease was the call. He was too close. That protective crease around the goalie. Violation. Ball goes back to Detroit. Still tied at 3, 7.52 left from Joe Lewis. Detroit with a slight lead in the loose ball index, the hustle index. There's a shot, and rope. Brian Lemon worked the defense, came up, got the ball, gets his first goal of the game, and a 4-3 lead for the Turbos. It's tough being a fan when your team isn't the home team, especially when I try to find coverage of my favorite team in the local paper. I'm lucky if I can find last week's score. But if you're like me, you'll be happy to know there's one publication that'll make you feel right at home, the Sporting News. You'll love the Sporting News, no matter what team you love, even if it is the home team. Call this number now and get four issues of the Sporting News free. You'll get opinions and analysis, team-by-team -team reports, and coverage of all the college conferences, plus baseball, basketball, and hockey all year long. Call now and you'll get four free issues of the Sporting News. If you like them, you'll get 24 more issues at this great TV price. If not, just mark the bill, cancel, and owe nothing. The four issues are yours to keep. So call now for the Sporting News, the publication that treats every team like the home team. Call now and you'll get four great issues of the Sporting News free. Call 1-800-233-0500. We're back at the Joe Louis Arena where the Baltimore Thunder are now leading. Our Detroit Turbos are leading over the Baltimore Thunder 4-3. to three. Joining me, though, Butch Marino. Butch, you've already scored two goals in a must-win situation for your team. But I wanted to point out the key that you are playing with torn ligaments in your foot. Yeah, that is correct. In the first game of the season, I rolled it right over and tore a ligament on the outside of my foot. And I've been playing all season with it. There's not much they can do surgically to repair it, so I just got to bear with it. How's it feeling? It's feeling pretty good today. Well, obviously, you're doing a great job. Already two goals. Is there a secret to scoring on Steve? Uh, no, just trying to pick my corners and finding the spots. That's all. Great. Three-time All-American, Butch Marino. And Butch had a chance to slam dunk a low shot in there, Christy, and just missed that last one. Consequently, the Turbos brought it down, and Rosa got the last goal. I had given it to number 25, Brian Lemon. It was Rosa from Dowling for the fourth goal of the game. The Turbos lead with 7.15 left in the second quarter. This one's gonna go either way. It looks like it'll go down to the wire. These teams playing as if this was a playoff game. Pete Park comes in, number nine. Park now with a power move, a very predictable power move against Todd Curry from Syracuse. Up top and a shot. Meredith finds the rope. Left-hander over the shoulder of David Lee. And is David Lee starting to weaken? We'll have to watch. Goal number five, Meredith. 
Left-handed shot, brings it up high. Watch David Lee get down low. Park can't get anything open against Todd Curry. Dishes it out now to Meredith. Watch Meredith come up top. Left-hander over the shoulder. David Lee well out in front. And watch David Lee move out front. Now here's Park coming in. Park gets stopped. Now David Lee moves out to cut the angle. Can't get his shoulder up high enough. And with that angle cut, Meredith finds the range over top for a two-goal lead for Detroit. The first two-goal lead for either team. 6.32 left in the first half. Baltimore now in danger of losing a little bit of the momentum they had. They had the first lead one to nothing. They had the lead at two to one. The first game against the Turbos, they were ahead four to nothing. And then a huge second quarter for Detroit got them going and they ended up scoring 15 to four from that point on to win 15 to eight in game number one. The Turbos four and one after that first opening win against Baltimore. Looking in close against David Lee. He makes a nice save looking for the outlet. Gets it on the near side to Canabine. Canabine to a galloping Martino. Martino tackled by Mueller. After the check, it's a That's a push. Over there. A hold call by Condon after the check. After and look at Skip Lucas. He's saying, what do you have to do to get a penalty? So Condon says the check came first by Mueller. Blue Mueller, three-time all Midwest player. Played at Michigan State. One of the top assist men has 11 assists coming into this game on this team for the Turbos. Ricky Freed, veteran from Philadelphia, now playing with the Turbos. Welsh up front, the juke move, gets two defenders on him. He tries to get it down low in a game that is being played close to the vest, gets one more goal for Baltimore. Beautiful job down low by Tom Gravante. Welsh got all the attention, the double team. Gravante just shovels it in low. Look at the attention Dietrich gives the top player, Welsh. Gravante comes in with a nice cut and just redirects. Welsh sees Gravante, gets it in. Gravante knows he has to redirect quickly because there goes Dietrich on the slide. Gravante with a sensational cut and a quick stick goal to bring Baltimore back within one. Five to four. Canabine in the faceoff against number 10, Driscoll. Push call, gives the ball back to Baltimore. So, with their backs against the wall and a two goals down in the second quarter, Baltimore scores to make it a one goal game. They can tie it up with the next goal. Ryan Kronberger. Keep it down. He's got a right handed shot, he takes it wide. Bounces off the boards, shot clock not reset. 12 seconds left again to the far side. Picked off beautifully, here come the turbos. Pat Coyle looking for Rennick. Takes the bounce shot wide. Dance, can't get Kronberg. Kronberger bounces it into Lindsey Dixon. Dixon the far side, can't get help. Two players on Dixon. He's got Rennick, he needs to get help. He knows somebody is open. Finally gives it up to Timmy Horms. Horms has Canabine on the far side. Canabine still wide open, now cuts across the crease as Marino controls it. Jackson, shot clock down to 10 for Baltimore. Taking a long time to clear, so they have a little time left. Ricky Freed takes a left-handed shot, and a fresh shot clock at 30. Here comes Welsh with the right-handed cannon, looking for rope in tight. Down on the far side, and another goal. Same place by Gravante. Gravante from Hobart just played his first game for this team last game. This is only his second game, and look at Dietrich. He's saying, give me some help down low. The benches are getting rough. <laughs> Dance. Saying, come on, buddy. And Coyle is out there fighting with Jeff Clodson, it looks like. The tempers are really fair here. The tie score made by Gravante. Gravante scores two in a row. And this one's getting out of hand early. 4 15 left in the second quarter. Open the door to the penalty box. We'll be back in a moment. The closing moments of the second quarter, all tied at five. Move it. Cool it. Silver. Bullet. Rock it. Smooth it. Silver. Taste it, live it, 
love it, say it, play it, take it, pull it, silver bullet. It's the right beer now. Grab it while you can. Silver bullet. Yeah, the right beer now. Are you ready to rumble? All right, after Gravante tied the game at five, we had the benches clear. Well, that's and Roy Condon, whether you can so square it away for us. Roy Condon, what happened? Who's in the box? Number five, number seven, both have five minute penalties fighting. They wash along with the turbos. Number 11 serves a five minute fighting for the bench. That is a served five minute. We got two fightings in here that will wash with those. We got two other two minute penalties. All right, we got, they're gonna have three men on the field. They'll have four on the field for two minutes locked in. All right, let's get it wrapped up. I tell you what, in the penalty box, that's where my position is. Skip Lick is now coaching for the uh, Baltimore team. I've got five turbos in here. That means Shane Sanderson is playing with 10 players on his bench. He's got three on the field. He's got four guys for the turbos going against those three. There's Jeff Clods on the right. He was in the fight. We don't know if he is physically able to continue. And there is the turbo bench. Oh, no, that's, the, I'm sorry, that was the penalty area. And there's me right here. Look, folks, I'm pointing at these guys. There's five of them there. I thought it was the benches, there's so many of them. But look at, I'm over here in the penalty box. I've got five turbos next to me serving time. Three are for five minute majors. Two of them on the other side, as I understand it, are five minute majors. I don't know, there's a lot of guys in the box. Let's just go back to the guy in action. The score is all tied at five. Four minutes left in the first half. Lee Felsbone, Christy Lee on the deuce, bringing you major indoor lacrosse league action. A lot of guys in the box right now. Four players for Baltimore against three for Detroit. It's impossible to settle all uh, orally to you, but there's a lot of guys in the penalty box. Five for Detroit, three for Baltimore, and some of them are major penalties, some are minor two-minute penalties, but both benches emptied a little while ago, and a lot of guys are paying the price right now. We're all tied at five, shot clock expires. And here comes Terry Bullen, number 28, team captain for the Turbos. Gets it up to Dowling with the underhand shot saved by David Lee. 120 left on the two minute penalties. And here comes Bullen again, being ragged by Todd Curry. Curry, an All American from Syracuse. Great program of field across that they have. Peter Park now looking for help. Park bounces it over to TD, Ted Dowling. Now on the near side, Lemon gets it into Park, but a check from Lindsey Dixon takes it out of his stick. Dowling back again to Park, he's so strong. A behind the back shot comes off of the goalie, and the goalie didn't really even see it, but David Lee makes the save. 41 seconds left on the two minute penalties for the Turbos. The Turbos now playing with only 10 players. Off to the side, Welsh gives it back. Freed over to Marino, and a shot by Marino does not find the net. Whoa, what a big chance for the Baltimore Thunder. Freed had a shot, gave it over to Marino. Marino couldn't find the net. Two or three fakes, missed the four by four and a half. Dietrich comes out unscathed. 5-5 five, five the score, 2.29 left in the second quarter. Christy, how, you got more people here, Christy, than you do over there. I know, Leaf, you are packed in there. Well, I'm on the bench for the Baltimore Thunder. I have to admit, before that altercation happened on the field, I was just about to make an observation that one of the players from Detroit, and I won't name any names, but I could, came by and was actually leave cross-checking these guys while they were on the bench, which is not really a legal move. Temper started flaring then, then he came back over after the fight and started yelling even more at the players here on the Baltimore bench. The guys here are saying, walk away from it. We don't need to act like that. We need to think. We need to be intelligent about it and just get out there and play the game. Well, Christy, I think you ought to strap on a helmet, nevertheless. It's getting rough over there, folks. Timeout called by Skip Lickfuss and the Baltimore Thunder. They've got two minutes left in the second quarter. It's all tied at five, and Lickfuss wants another goal.
early get a pump, jumping out of balloons with bungee cords on or riding a motorcycle at 100 miles an hour with my head tucked over the handlebars, not being able to see anything, that is definitely an adrenaline high. Knowing that your life hangs this far between life and death, you know, you get those endorphins popping, that, that incredible feeling, that rush. I kind of like being on stage. It's definitely escapism. I never really experienced true zen, but I'm hoping me and my Ducati will get there. ESPN2, people who do. All right, we're into the championship week. It continues through March 13th, 34 games, 26 conference championships, the entire ACC tournament and the tournament selection special. It's all on the deuce, the best basketball you could ask for and lots of it. Five to five here, major indoor lacrosse league action from Joe Lewis Arena in Detroit. Baltimore now trying to get goal six. They find rope on the backside. That doesn't count as it comes off the boards. Shot clock expires. Keep an eye on the tempers of these two teams. They are explosive at this point. A lot of vendettas out there, I can tell you now, because I'm standing next to some of the guys that got hit, pushed, and shoved. Shots for Baltimore leading by 10, and that is a good sign, although the, goal, the game only tied at five. Shot by Park, finds rope. They're up by one. Pete Park beats David Lee. He got it down low and found the back tie. Look at him begging for the ball. Right away, he takes one fake, gets Lee a little bit out of position, right between the legs to the back side of the net. Finds rope when they needed it. Now a one goal lead with 117 left. Peter Park, a little bit of a disappointment this year, only because he had set such high standards for himself. Dowling led the team last year in points, but Pete Park led the team last year in goals. He had 16. This year, Pete Park only has six coming into this game. If he starts getting his offense back on his normal track, that'll be extra trouble for anybody playing the Detroit Turbos. They now lead by one with less than a minute to go in the first half. Kronberger looking at a 14 second shot clock. Turbos second in the middle and on goal shooting percentage. You saw that Baltimore led in shots 26 to 16, but the Turbos lead the game six to five. And that is because of course their shooting percentage is much more efficient, much higher than Baltimore's. Driscoll, the Wild Bunch making an impact in the first half. Driscoll wants it back, he gets it, looks in the far side. Tries to find Ted Dowling, checked away by Baltimore. 17 seconds left, time for another shot. Meredith takes one off David Lee, follow up in rope by Pete Park. He's got two straight goals. Pete Park, 6'4", 225 from British Columbia, Vancouver. Watch him come inside, get the redirect off of the, the shot that came from way out front. David Lee makes the first save, watch. Bounces out, Park right on top of it, redirects it over the shoulder. Good, heads up play by Pete Park. He gets two in a row, and that's the advantage for the Turbos. Pete Park gives him a seven to five lead. Only nine seconds to go here in the first half. Timeout called by Detroit with six seconds. They're trying to get one more shot. And now the timeout by Shane Sanderson. He wants to get one more shot, maybe a three goal lead. As they go into the halftime, Pete Park taking over in the closing moments of the first half. Why they have possession? Well, Who's nobody's that? really talking to Shane Sanderson except for Meredith and Dowling. They're all back on the field. It's a very short timeout. Yeah. As the referees look for something to give the ball to, Dwayne Jacobs comes up, gives it down low to Meredith. Here comes Driscoll on the cut. Time running down. Park couldn't get it. One second left. That'll do it. But an impressive final moments of the first half. Pete Park takes control of the offense. His team leads by two. The Turbos on a roll, lead seven to five.
Are you frustrated trying to save money on your long distance phone bill? Everybody's got these different plans at different hours and different times and, and what have you. And I mean, none of us have time for that. If you want to give us savings? Give us savings. Just give it to us. You've got it. Introducing AT&T True USA Savings. Spend $25 a month and get 20% off your AT&T long distance calls to anyone, anytime, anywhere in the USA. No gimmicks, no hassle, no calling circles. Just 20% off guaranteed. Going to switch back to AT&T. I want to go back. Call us at 1-800-PICK-ATT. The call is free, switching is free, and you get 20% off the AT&T calls you make in the USA. Call now and we'll even reward you for saving. With AT&T True Rewards, you can also get points good for free AT&T minutes or free frequent flyer miles on Delta, United, or US Air. I love that. That's great. There's never been a better time to switch to AT&T. Just one call can get you savings plus rewards. Call us now at 1-800-PICK-ATT. I ended up going back to AT&T and I've been very satisfied. Yo, true. Voice. We're back with major indoor lacrosse league action where the Detroit Turbos lead the Baltimore Thunder 7 to 5 at Joe Lewis Arena. It's the Coors Light Halftime Report. I'm Christy Lee along with Lee Belsmo. Joining me now at halftime after an explosive first half, the head coach for the Baltimore Thunder, Skip Lickvis. First of all, Skip, we got to talk about the fight. How does that affect your team? Well, as I said earlier, Christy, I think that that's part of the game. It's not a, it's not a fun part of the game. Uh, we try to minimize those situations. It'll affect our team in that they've got to come back and, gra and gather their composure real quick so we can get back in this game. This is a very important game for you to win. You're 0-5 coming into this, but your playoff hopes are still alive. You can get past Detroit? Absolutely. I mean, uh, it's not do or die per se tonight, but obviously you got to get a win on the board to get everybody feeling well. Well, the team is playing very well the first half. What are you going to tell them back in the locker rooms we can expect to see in the second? I think the most important thing right now is they've got to keep their composure. These guys are going to come at them, be a little chippy, maybe try to prompt a little bit more of that action. We're going to have to just resist it. Great. Thank you very much. Head coach for the Baltimore Thunder, Skip Lickbush. We'll be back with stats and all that fun stuff coming up next on The Deuce. It's a silver time. It's a silver place. Silver setting at a silver base. Swing it far. Our very best friends. So silver bullet smooth. They never ever end. In a silver time. Good light. In a silver place. So right here now. They're always working on something new. That's why everyone who's serious about lacrosse plays with Sticks equipment. My mother uses a stick. With Sticks, you'll score more gold. Probably a thousand, hundred thousand, million. The people at Sticks know the sport. The lacrosse players. The lacrosse players. I think my brother Paul works at Sticks. Every goal we scored was Stick Sticks. Sure do. Can't say any more about it. Welcome back to the Coors Light Halftime Report. It's the mill on the deuce. Lee Felsmo and Christy Lee, and we are all set in moments for the second half action. But first, let's take a look at the stats that made that first half so close. Seven to five, Detroit leads. But look at the stats now with the shots on goal in Baltimore's favor, loose balls in Detroit's favor, and the saves, of course. The biggest guy in the nets has been the young kid from Detroit. And that has been the story on their side. The shots, let's take a look at the shot chart for the Thunder. You can see that they're a right-handed team. Two shots from both wings on the right. Good shooting percentage, 50% there. But the big story, only three goals from 16 shots right in front of Dietrich. No goals, seven shots a little farther out. They've got to get more there. The Turbos now on their shot chart, a little bit better. Left-handed predominantly, one for one on both left-handed areas and then right down the middle they've got four goals on 18 shots this team has a great shooting percentage and that is going to be a factor as the game progresses we'll be back to roll out the rock in the second half are you ready to rumble
travel first class with the host hotels of the major indoor lacrosse league in Baltimore, the Sheraton Inner Harbor Hotel. In Boston, the Boston Marriott at Copley Place and the Cambridge Center Marriott. In Buffalo, the Buffalo Hilton. In New York, the Long Island Marriott. And in Philadelphia, the Philadelphia Airport Marriott. The official hotels of the Major Indoor Lacrosse League. In the preseason, I don't get out much. But come spring, there's nothing more relaxing than a little walk in the park. All men are created equal. Some just work harder in the preseason. As we get set to start the second half, teams are at even strength, five on five, Come although on, each on, team has away. two players in the penalty box. They are serving five-minute majors for fighting. On the field, you'll see five on five, even strength, but the benches are not at even strength. They're missing two players on Baltimore and two players on Detroit. Inside, watch Dowling on the back door. Play. Nothing but rope. Teddy Dowling gets his hat trick early in the second half. It only took him 18 seconds to beat David Lee, and they are coming out smoking. David Lee gets set, but Dowling makes the good cut left to right, comes around, finds the corner, nothing but rope. Again, inside the defense, takes it backhanded, fakes near side, and then dunks it behind David Lee. Dowling with a hat trick and an 8-5 to five lead for the Turbos. This faceoff picked up by Todd Curry. Paul Canaby now number six for Baltimore. And he is defense by Brian Lemon, number 25. Brian Lemon playing tough defense as Dixon, number 12, picks it up. He'll start the uh, offense for the Baltimore Thunder. Played by Leahy. Shot clock down to nine. Dixon in front, he'll have a shot, but he checked away. He did not give up the ball. Really controlled it for that whole time. And Leahy doing a good job defensively. No, stop, hold it, hold it, hold it. Stop. Subs, relax, Subs! All right, Roy Condon calming things down. Subs, he says. Only a minute into Go. the third Go quarter. Center, already a goal by Ted Dowling to give the Turbos a three-goal lead. That's when you start getting a little bit comfortable in major indoor lacrosse. They're averaging 11 goals per game. That's fifth in the mill. Their defense, the worst in the mill, so they've got to improve a little bit on both ends of the field if they want to have a chance to get into the playoffs. Gravante, he has looked sharp tonight, number 14. He scored the last two goals for Baltimore. And at one point, had them up, or had them tied five to five. Before three straight for the Turbos. Here's Gravante. He scored both of his goals down low off the ball. He was in the right place at the right time, just as Welsh was there, but the ball goes into Dietrich. And now here comes Dean. Sikoni, Sikoni and Dwayne Jacobs, the wild bunch, cranks it up. Jacobs will give it up to Coyle, the trailer, but no. He holds a Coyle, trying to give him a, a screen there, a little bit of a pick. And the ball now down into Jacobs and that bounced off of David Lee's stick. Far side, Chris Driscoll getting nailed to the boards by the Baltimore Thunder defense. He picks up the ball, Driscoll wide open up front, looking for help, down low, Jacobs. Left-hander looks back for Driscoll. Shot clock at 23, plenty of time. Jacobs out to Coyle. Coyle from Ontario. Boom, and again a shot low, picked up by David Lee. Big shot by Dean Sacconi. Welsh evades that hit by Coyle. Double team by Jacobs, and they get the ball back. Paul Canabine picks up the loose ball against the boards. He's got Martino to his left. He'll, can't, he'll take the shot there, and Canabine bounces it wide. 10 on the shot clock, now Martino has to pick it up. Seven on the shot clock. He's gotta get a shot off on the four by four and a half. He's gotta do it quick, two, three. Just enough time, now they reset at 30, but the ball will go back to Detroit. One. Dean Sacconi picks it up. And now back to the goalie, and here they outlet to set up their offense. Christy Lee, how's the second half look from the bench? Well, Leaf, speaking of goalies, we have Ted Sawicki, a all-pro goalie for the Detroit Turbos with us. Ted, you are one of the few people we can talk to. As your team just scores again, Ted Dowling's fourth goal of the evening, I might add. You're one of the few people we can talk to that 
that's not really busy at this point to tell us what actually went on in the locker room at halftime. We had that bench clearing brawl in the first half, and we've got to come back in here and play lacrosse. Yeah, well, our coach uh, emphasized the fact that we should stick to scoring and winning the game. That's more important than anything else than the rough stuff, which we all love and, and the fans love. So we're going to concentrate on scoring. We have, we've come out and scored two quick goals and take the lead, and uh, that's what we want to see. Yes, Ted Dowling just scored. In fact, that's the second goal for him in the second half, I believe, with only, you know, a couple of minutes gone by. Well, thank you very much. I know your thoughts are in Manchester as you're headed for the Canadian team for the World Championship. Yeah, that's right. I'm looking forward to that, and it'll be my fourth time, and maybe I can beat the Americans, or we can beat the Americans this time, and finally win a, a gold medal for Canada. Great. All-pro goalie, Ted Sawicki. Goalie. Ted Sawicki, all-pro in 90 and 91, before handing that... Uh, High accolade over to Sal Acasio and Dallas Elliott the last two years. But Ted Dowling is really on a roll. You saw the replay. He split two defenders, came in, and gives his team a four-goal lead. Marino now, in desperation, takes a right-handed shot from the left-hand shooter's side. Little or no angle. Bad shot for Butch. He's got to move over, give himself a better chance. And with 10 minutes and 30 seconds left, a four-goal lead for the Turbos. The home team really showing that they are a contender. They've got... One game left with the Buffalo Bandits. They lost to them by one goal earlier this year. That'll be the last game in the regular season for Detroit. They feel like they can handle Buffalo. Playing with great confidence, Pete Park takes a right-handed shot past Angotti. Shot clock expires, 30 seconds up. And now Ricky Friedel inbound. Martino. Paul Canabine gives it up to Wills. Back to Canabine, inside fake, and Dietrich with a big save. Martino picks it up, right-handed shot wide. Good offensive series for Baltimore and sensational save by Dietrich. He is one of the key reasons why this team is in tied for first place for the National Division. Could be alone in first place with a win tonight. We talked about it, they would be the first team to do that other than Buffalo in two years. Hard shot by Driscoll. Ten seconds still on the shot clock. He did not reset it. He got to hit the four by four and a half. Out into the cylinder. Missed by Driscoll. Picked up by Coyle. He'll crank it. Left-handed way wide of the net. And the ball will go over to Baltimore. Baltimore, their backs against the wall. They've got to crank up the offense. They're down by four with nine left in the third quarter. Joe Lewis, the home team, Detroit Turbos, 9-5. to five. They've opened up a real sizable lead off of Ted Dowling's two goals to start the third quarter and Pete Park's two goals to end the second quarter. Four straight after the game was tied at five. So we've had a lot of guys scoring in deuces here in the deuce. Gravante scored two to tie it at five. Park scored two to give them a 7-5 to five lead. And then Dowling scored two in a row to give them the 9-5 to five lead. Nine minutes left. Detroit right in the face of David Lee, a new shot clock. Skip Lickless will find out what his team's made of. Their backs are really against it right now. They've got to suck it up and start playing with intensity. His game plan was to really push the intensity on the defensive end and the offensive end, but started on defense first. I think hurting the Baltimore team, we don't have all pro Dave Petromala, defensive specialist, or Bill Durgle, who was a uh, face-off specialist. Bush Marino, right-handed shot, and that one hits the goal and goes wide. Dietrich with another big save. Picked up on the far side by Pat Coyle. Coyle now looks up ahead. Mueller's wide open. Mueller, no, not wide open anymore. Great defense applied by Wilson. Sacconi now double-teamed just the way Lichtus wanted the defense to react. He wanted a lot of pressure on the offense of Detroit. Make him make decisions quickly. Here comes Mueller, Adam Mueller with a left-handed shot wide. Shot clock down to five. Ricky Freed picks it up, looks for the outlet. Freed getting ragged, he gives up to Todd Curry. Freed nailed against the boards. 
He's up. Curry now has Canabine behind him. 53 following up the play. Matt Wilson gets pummeled by Bullen. Picked up by Canabine. Here comes up to the top to Dixon. Dixon with a right handed shot. He's double teamed. Where's the open man? Ricky Freed up top with Martino, but they're both standing there. Inside for Dixon. He's in the crease and he'll go back to Detroit. Uh oh. Bullen will get called for roughing. As you look at Dietrich and Jacobs. 28, Bullen, the enforcer, the captain. We'll go into the box. Shane Sanders looking pretty comfortable. Two minutes for roughing. Two minute call on Bullen, who is really a, a guy who sets the tone as we look at David Lee. But the pressure now is on the other end of the field. It'll be Steve Dietrich facing the power play of Baltimore. They haven't had a lot of great shots off this power play. Dixon now off to Mark Marino. Marino going to the near side pipe, goes right back to him. But look at the defense by Mueller. Marino has to give it up. Up top to Dixon. He's got Wills to his right, shooter's left. Ball comes out off the backboards. Shot clock down to 17. 130 left on the penalty. Plenty of time to get a good shot. Dixon to Marino again with a shot near side. And this is the pipe again. This will not be a penalty. They'll maintain the ball. Came off of the shot. Shot clock down to 3-2. They're going to lose possession on this one. Shot way out in front. Ball goes behind the net. Detroit will get possession. 117 on the penalty. Two Bullen on Detroit. But they have possession. And the four-goal lead. 6.40 left in the third. Leaf Elsmo, Christy Lee on the deuce as we get this league moving toward the playoffs. And this is a team to be reckoned with, the Detroit Turbos. The young wild bunch really creating some problems for the rest of the league. And look at Dowling, who already has four goals today. Almost got his fifth right there. Just missed the net. Trying to get it back to Jackson. He couldn't pick it up. Jackson a little bit miffed at the high throw by Marino. He's, he's taking time to uh, let him know about it. He cannot go back and get it, and that's why he was a little ticked off. Nobody was playing Jackson, and the shot just kind of rolled off, or the pass rolled off of Marino's stick, went a little high, so they lose possession. And this is a power play, and they don't even have the ball. 30 seconds left at the power play. 38 shots on goal per game is the lowest in the league for the Turbos. It shows you how well they shoot, because they have a 4-1 record. Ball goes now back to the Turbos. They've got 17 seconds to get one good shot. Let's see if they can do it. Welsh picks it up. It's still 5 on 4 for another 10 seconds. They dish it down to the right side to Marino. Now they've switched. Jackson's up top. Jackson's on the right-handed top corner. He tries the same shot near corner. And Dietrich again with a shoulder save. Wills up to Welsh. He'll shoot it from there. No. Off to Jackson. Near side. He had the net but just missed the goal. Looking for rope the whole way and just missed the 4 by 4 and a half. 18 square feet, pulled it a little bit to the inside. All even now. Teams at even strength, 5, 16 left. Marino against a tough defense of Mueller. Mueller now lost his stick. He can play body, but he cannot use his hands the way he would with the stick. Marino launches that right-handed shot, but again misses the 18 square feet. Here come the turbo. This is Mueller to Coyle. Coyle looking for the trailer and could not quite get it in the stick of Brian Lemon. Racehorse pace, Curry, double team. Curry looking for help all the way down into the stick of Dietrich. He was trying to find Dixon coming across. Double team, just like basketball. Somebody's open, but Baltimore cannot find the player. Detroit doing exactly what Baltimore wanted to do to them. They're double teaming the ball, applying pressure, making Baltimore make quick decisions and getting bad decisions more often than not. A lot of pressure put on the Thunder. Not to mention the fact they're four goals down with four minutes to go in the third. This is Wills. Great left-handed shooter. He comes in, launches himself into the cylinder. Just wide again. Six seconds left on the shot clock. Oh, they try to chip it in. And Dietrich will control the ball. Four goal lead, four minutes to go in the third. Okay, so I tend to put things off. For me, the time just has to be right. Like, I meet this amazing girl, and she's coming over tonight. <laughs> it, it's like with Rogaine. I've been meaning to check it out, 
This is important to me. I've thought about calling lots of times. You know when I called? Today. This was my time. It could be your time, too. To find out more about Rogaine with Minoxidil, call this 800 number now. You'll get a free information kit filled with facts to help answer your questions about Rogaine. And since you need a prescription to get Rogaine, you'll also get a list of local doctors offering a free private consultation to help you decide if Rogaine is right for you. So call today. Hi. Hi. Nice place. Call now 1-800-433-8666 for a free information kit. All right, pick up the action on the deuce. Nine to five the score. Joe Lewis, 124 left in the third quarter in that four-goal lead. Two goals by Dowling this third quarter are the only scores. No scores for Baltimore, yet they've had power plays, but they just cannot get the good shots. Marino shooting from the right-handed side. Now up to Jackson, who rolls up over top of Marino. Not much of an angle, and Dietrich makes another big save. Fresh shot clock back to Dixon. He can't pick it up. The ball's loose. Bullen comes in, checks him away from the ball, and here comes the fast break. And the call will be against Bullen. A loose push call goes back to Baltimore. 135 left on the penalty to Jim Meredith. It's a power play, but watch Dixon get rocked by Bullen. And that push right there after the check gave the ball back. It was just a technical foul. Gave it back to Dixon and company. Power play, a rocket off the shoulder of Dietrich. Wills has got the good left hand. Here comes Marino's cannon shot. Nothing but rope. Low and hard, baby. That one was coming in at about 100 miles an hour. 90 to 100 is where you'll find the fastest was shooters. The line. And Dietrich showing the wear the and tear of this game. I got the call on the push. Finally, Not Marino sights it up. He'll go point. far corner low, just underneath the outstretched hand of Dietrich. Dietrich out blocking it. Dietrich guessed right. You see the shot go to his left. He just opened up a little bit of rope. And that's all Marino needed. Marino gets the hat trick for him. And the team stays alive. Less than a minute to go, nine to six. Baltimore with new life. They have a chance. Canopy now against the defense of Pete Park. Kronberger tries to set a pick. 32 seconds left. They want fresh players on, and they're having a tough time getting them on. Gravante gets checked in the head. Brush, no penalty. Ricky Free back to Marino, who feels great about his shooting tonight. Tries to get back into position to shoot. Shot clock down to five, down to four. He better take one quick. Jackson from up top. Bounce shot in rope. He's got a goal with one second to go on the shot clock. He bounces it from about 15 yards up. Well above the range of a shot that normally would move or beat Dietrich. I don't know if they're counting that one or not. Nine to seven, it's on the board. And that one well out in front. Shot clock counting down. Watch, they give it back up top to Jackson. Jackson took two steps in. He looked at the shot clock and bounced it in. Beautiful job by Jackson. He had to shoot it and just aimed it perfectly. Now they're back to within two, nine to seven. Critical goal, two straight. Marino and Jackson bring their team back to competition in this one. One quarter left, that'll do it for the third quarter. They're within striking distance, just two goals down. Detroit still leads. We'll be back to Joe Lewis on the deuce in just a moment. Early humans gathered to celebrate important events, like St. Patrick's Day. At Bennigan's, they still do, with 10 days of food, fun, and prizes, including trips to Ireland. So come celebrate St. Patrick's at Bennigan's. Food and fun for humans. People wonder, how far will he go? How good will he be? I'm only 22 years old. Stick around. My dandruff and itch are awful. I'll try anything. Denerex tingles. Head and shoulders doesn't. Both have effective dandruff medicine, but Denerex has something extra that tingles. That's why I started using Denerex. No flakes, no itch. Denerex, the serious dandruff shampoo. Don't forget Sports Night, ESPN2's flagship program. Sunday through Thursdays, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. 
tape most nights. It's live, though, at 5. Watch Sports Night on the Deuce. Right now, we're at Joe Lewis, and there's the score by quarters. First quarter was a deadlock game, but then Detroit gets that five goal second quarter, and then they opened up the third quarter with two goals, but Baltimore came back when they had to, and you saw they tied the third quarter two to two, and they have one quarter left, Baltimore does, to really stay in a serious playoff hunt. Kevin Dance gets rocked from behind by Angotti. This is it, folks, 15 minutes. You're gonna see some pushing, shoving, hitting. The tempers may go. Kronberger with a stick just bent in half. As we look at David Lee, still in the goal, still in the nets, protecting the rope for Baltimore. Marino, big night for him. He's got a hat trick. Feeling good about his shot. Defended there by Kip Rennick. Now Ricky Freed. Back down to Marino. He wants the right hand. He starts left this time. He'll roll back. All the way down low. Looking for a shot in close. This is Gravante. Now he ditches it up front. That was a great shot and a big save by Dietrich. Maybe one of the best shots of the night, but they just did not give it enough accuracy to beat Dietrich, who blocks it as well as anybody in the league. You've got to hit the corners on Dietrich. He really gets squared in front of the goal. Now Detroit tries to get their offense going. Two straight goals for Baltimore. They've gained a little bit of momentum. First goal in the fourth quarter will be critical. Five on the shot clock, four, three, and counting down. Defense by Tim Welsh. Shot clock will expire. The ball goes to Baltimore, and the Thunder will get it back. Big goal. Whoever scores first in the fourth. As you look at the third quarter stats, Baltimore led in shots and loose balls, but Detroit really controlled most of that quarter because of their great shooting efficiency. He's not going Dixon. anywhere. Works it against Leahy. Dixon still has it. He's got 10 on the shot clock. He's got to give it up. Finally does to Wills. This is the natural lefty. Now back to Dixon. Dixon gets a check from behind. Great job, Brian Lemon on the run. He's got TD Ted Dowling trailing. Dowling gets in the way of Martino. Now the trailing player is Rosa. Takes the shot. Big save by Lee. Both goalies looking sharp as the fourth quarter starts. Canabine leveled by Lemon. A shot for the corner, and Dietrich makes another great save. Walk away! Walk away! I got 13 on the roughing! Rosa will get called for roughing. Martino took the shot and got ridden up the backside. The play will be called against John Rosa. He'll go to the box. Roughing is the call by Roy Condon, who was right there on the call. Martino came in, took the shot, and was just ridden up from the back by Johnny Rosa. This power play now for Baltimore becomes critical. They're down by two. They really need to move it for a good shot. Shane Sanderson. Tom. Top right, top right. Looks across to the penalty box a moment ago. Says that's all right, Mr. Rosa. Good hustling play, I think, was the message there. Dixon has an equipment problem. He has to go off. He's a quarterback of this power play and now Tim Welsh comes out. Welsh has got a good shot from up top too. Let's see if he can trigger something new. The left-handed shooter up top is Wills. Down this is back to Welsh. Wills, Welsh working in on that one side. Marino likes the right-handed shot. Now they roll up Jackson. Jackson back far side. Ricky Freed takes the left-hander. Jackson again, shot clock to 12. Welsh might want to take one himself. He does and the ball comes off the foot of Dietrich. Shot clock resets. This is what Skip Lickfuss wanted. He wanted second and third shots. They haven't had too many of them tonight. There's shot and rope by Timmy Welsh. Three straight goals for this man's team. Lickfuss is Baltimore Thunder on a roll. They moved it beautifully. They got the second shot. This is what Lickfuss wanted. And finally, Welsh takes the shot that beats Dietrich. It takes its toll on a goalie when you can get second and third shots. One of the weaknesses of the Baltimore offense was that they have not been getting second and third shots. Welsh finally does. He gets a power play goal. They're, if the, they're back to within one, nine to eight. And Christy Lee, the Baltimore bench, has to be getting happier. That's right, Lee. Just a few seconds ago, John Tucker, who's playing the assistant coach role, sent Timmy Welsh in on that power play. He wasn't originally scheduled to go out there. Well, obviously, it paid off for him. So look for Timmy Welsh to do more of that power play and be at the top of the key there. Well, they needed to shake something up, and that really did the trick. 
second shot was critical too. They missed the first, but they got it back. And Dietrich, of course, the goalie wears down a little bit when you put continual pressure on him. Baltimore again now with a five on five offense. Shot clock down to five. Welsh will want to take one. It comes inside, rolls back, underhand shot wide of the net. Follow up, big save by Dietrich as the shot clock winds down. It's the net. 11.40 left. This one is going down to the wire. Three straight goals for Baltimore. We've had two straight upsets the last two weeks. This could be the third straight if Baltimore can pull it off. They really need a win to have a realistic chance against New York. New York with one win going into the final two games of the season. Interference call, the Baltimore Thunder will now get their offense going. Freed with Pete Park on him, tries to give it to Wills. Wills now double team, can't get it up, and here comes Terry Bullen against Ricky Freed. Bullen asking for a trailing player. Now the whole team's trailing. He's got plenty of targets. There's one, and rope for Ciccone. Ciccone scores goal number 10 for uh, the Turbos. Bullen had the whole team trailing finally. He just waited over there and finally found a target. Watch Lee move from his right to his left. Now he gets over there just a little bit late. Fourth quarter, don't forget, he's been losing a lot of water and expecting to go the whole way is David Lee for Coach Skip Lickfuss. But tiring is the key. These goalies wear a lot of pads. And both Dietrich and David Lee, I tell you, are not as strong or as quick as they were in the first quarter. They lose a tremendous amount of fluid. A lot of the goalies in this league just can't make four quarters. Two goal lead now for the Turbos. That goal was really one that was well needed for the offense of Shane Sanderson. They hadn't scored in some time. 10.38 left in the game. Marino. Got three goals already. He wants another shot. Reno comes in, takes it. He's got rope. The stick was deflected. It was an off speed that finally went in. He wanted, I think, to shoot lower, but the check from behind sent it up. And when Dietrich dropped to his knees, the shot goes high. Let's take a look. Marino, the time winding down. He comes in. Watch the check coming from out. The check hits the ball. Dietrich on his knees. Watch Dietrich go to his knees. He goes down, and the ball comes up high. Ten to nine. Now when you buy a case of quality Valvoline motor oil, you can send away for a Valvoline t-shirt. Honey, can you pick up the milk? Okay. And become a member of the Valvoline performance team. Join the Valvoline performance team and you'll feel like you're right in the middle of the action. So buy a case and get a shirt, plus great deals on Valvoline racing gear and a lot more. Honey, did you get the milk? People who know, use Valvoline. Success in life is the result of preparation and having the right tools. To become the person you've always wanted to be, select Nordic Flex Gold. You provide the effort, and Nordic Flex Gold provides the means to your personal success. You want to develop the poise, confidence, and energy that come from a strong, toned body. And like these people, you can have that body in just 12 weeks with Nordic Flex Gold. Some people spend a lifetime wishing for a great body. Now with Nordic Flex Gold, you can unlock your potential in as little as 12 weeks. Nordic Flex Gold features linear motion and a patented isokinetic resistance system, providing results faster and more efficiently than with other strength training systems. Now is the time to act. Great muscle tone, accelerated fat loss, increased energy, as well as poise and confidence can all be yours in just 12 weeks with Nordic Flex Gold. To order or for more information, Call now. John Lancey, number 23 for the Turbos, facing off against Paul Canavan, the good-looking rookie. Don't forget, Bill Durgle, one of the best in the league, not here today for Baltimore. That'll have an effect now in the late going. But a one-goal game in favor of the Turbos, who get that face off. Lancey now will control as they put some fresh players on. Ted Dowling, the leader of the Wild Bunch. Double team now, Dowling picks it off in midair. He looks for help in the middle, he gets it to Leahy. And the ball goes wide. They get a fresh shot clock though, down to 30. Kronberger picks it up. D 
defense by Dowling. David Lee now gets it here. Roy County trying to maintain control of this game. Welsh. Tommy Gramante had two goals to end up the scoring for Baltimore in the first half. Tenny Welsh from North Carolina. Low rug burner came in there with nobody in front of it. Easy for Dietrich to spot it. That's the kind of shot you really need to have a little bit of a screen in front of you, something to get that goalie off his vision and form. Turbos now. Meredith over to Park. Park's got double teams there. Looks to the trailing player. Full in with a right-handed shot and a great save by Lee. He came out and really cut down the angle beautifully. Jackson bounces, passes it. Orms gets it to Freed. In the middle to Dixon, and Dixon misses an easy slam dunk. He would have had a great shot. Might not have beaten the great Steve Dietrich, but Dixon could not pick it up. 8.50 left in the game. A one-goal lead by the Turbos. Timeout. And timeout for Skip Lickless and the Baltimore Thunder. They want to make it stick right now. Think of all this as a large block of ice. Think of this as a chip off the old block. Coors Light's aged ice cold. So when you think of ice, think of the silver bullet. The only way to chill. Dear car owners, if you had a brake problem tomorrow, could you think of one brake specialist to go to? Where can you go for same-day brake service? A guarantee on brake shoes and pads for as long as you own your car. And the expertise of doing over two million brake jobs a year? Midas. Think of us as the brake specialists. We're pretty good at mufflers, too. Back to Joe Lewis, the Wild Bunch controls the offense and the success of the Turbos. Look at this, they average six goals, four assists per game, responsible for 34% of the offense. Today, they've got five goals already, or six, two for Jacobs, four for Dowling, and uh, four assists, so they are right on schedule. Now they have the ball back, the Turbos. Give it up. Dwayne Jacobs takes the shot left-handed. And the one-goal lead remains safe. Here comes a fast break for Angotti. Angotti out front. Driscoll trailing. Driscoll playing defense. Shot and rope for Vince Angotti. The game is tied. Great outlet find Vince Angotti. And they beat Dietrich for one of the few times tonight. Here Angotti reaches back. He knows he's got a player Driscoll up his back. Finally, he waits for the last moment, finds rope on Dietrich, who's been exceptionally tough. Far side, Dietrich knew it was going there, gave him a little bit of a target, tried to block it with his leg and arm. All tied at 10. Eight minutes left. Leif Elsmo, Christy Lee on the deuce with major indoor lacrosse league action. Rosa, number 13, gives it back to Lancey. There he is. Four goals tonight. Ted Dowling, leader of the Wild Bunch. They try to find Dowling, it's picked off by Clodson. Dowling wasn't even looking. The pass was by Rosa. It was a little give and go move, but uh, Dowling not even aware that it was coming back to him. Seven and a half minutes, Gravante. Baltimore with blue life. They have scored five of the last six goals to tie this one up. Trying to find Gravante on the backside, he does a great job of parking himself away from the ball down low in the pipe. You can get it to him. Impossible slide for the goalie. Right. Now new offense for Pat Leahy. Get the ball down to Meredith. Meredith into Mueller. Mueller picks it up, tries to beat Jackson. Mueller's got great size up to Park. Here's another big target. And a check from behind takes it away. Gravante can't pick it up cleanly. Park does. 
Mark is so tough. 225, 6 4. Look at him. Nobody can get him. Finally checked out by Jackson and Gravante. Gravante's tired. It goes behind him to Welsh. Welsh now with Gravante the trailer. Freed behind him. Back to Gravante. Right handed shot blocked by Bullen. Beautiful defense. And Gravante is absolutely spent. He's got to get off the field. Here comes Park. He's had three trips down the field as well. Coyle. Looking for Rennick. Rennick picks it up. Kip Rennick, the real good shot in close against David Lee. Does not go. Lee picks up the loose ball. Now outlets. Clodson beats Dance. This is Zangotti. He just scored the last goal. Big one. Tries to beat two players. Can't cut the seam. He's leveled. Dixon. Shot by Kronberger. has got rope and a lead. 11-10. Baltimore's in front. They have not held the lead since the first quarter. They were down at one point, nine to five in the third quarter, and they retake the lead 11 to 10. Huge goal, Dixon comes up, attracts a lot of attention from the defense, gives it way out front to Kronberger, and with a little bit of a screen, watch Kronberger with the right hand, a screen there, and the defense of Mueller really blocked the vision of Dietrich as that bounce shot becomes a huge goal for Kronberger. Could be the game winner, but a lot of time left. I doubt the score will stay 11 to 10. Now, Shane Sanderson, a little bit of concern on his face for the first time. Dietrich came off the field. His helmet needed to be fixed. There's Ted Sawicki, number 30, a former All-Pro. Dietrich now fixed his helmet. He'll go back in, equipment timeout. Christy, can you fill us in on what happened over there? Um, I believe Steve Dietrich had a problem with his helmet leak, but right now the major story on our Baltimore Thunder bench is Brian Kronberger. Brian just scored the go-ahead goal, 11-10 now, the Thunder leads. And Brian, what's the strategy for your team to go ahead and take this win? Uh, we're gonna try to double, double the ball down the corners and try to create turnovers, get our fast break going. All right, Brian Kronberger, three-time All-American, and they also leap are telling me, well, not uh, directly, but uh, score off the left hip of Steve Dietrich. Well, the hip is always a great target for any goalie. They sweep down low, they cover high, and there's a little bit of a target there because it's, it's one of the areas that just doesn't get protected naturally because of the way men are constructed, or human beings are constructed. So it's a good target. Kronberger voicing the strategy of Skip Lickfist from the get-go. He wants to double, he wants to push the tempo defensively and offensively to force quick decisions. Fitness becomes a key factor. This is a big arena. Something we haven't talked about, Christy, is the fact that Baltimore plays on a small arena. This is a big floor. Will that bode well for Detroit? Mueller. Michigan State All-American picks it up. The ball goes in. Dowling cannot collect it. Baltimore double team, triple teaming. They know they have a potential win if they can just hold on to this lead. 11 to 10 the score. Push on Baltimore. Driscoll now inbound for the Turbos. He's looking for help. Here comes Dwayne Jacobs. Tries to duck inside. Look at David Lee. David Lee pulled the net. Actually, he fell down on the net or something. A lot of times the goalies will do that. If they're not quite set, they'll kind of yank the goal out of position. It makes the game stop for a second and then they get reset. If he's not real comfortable, watch, see if David Lee does it. Oh, accidental, he just got tripped over his own man. Kronberger tripped him, and when you're down, you better make sure the goalie sees that things aren't reset. So David Lee, an exceptional game for him. Both goalies playing very well. And it looks like David Lee, David Lee gets sent to the box. J.J. Pearl, this is critical, one goal lead, and David Lee gets sent to the box. Must have been something he said after that trip maneuver of his own man. No, he was called for delay of the game. All right, he gets a delay of the game call. This could be the most critical penalty of the game. Now, when he went into the net, he pushed it back, but I really think that was a call that Roy Condon didn't really see because that was legitimate. He got tripped, and I think Roy Condon did not see the trip, or he wouldn't have called that. That was not a flagrant delay of the game. Skip Lickvist does not like it at all, and I can see why. I don't think Roy Condon saw the trip. Anyway, J.J. Pearl, with no warm-up, is in on a power play. Ball into the five-hole, picked up beautifully there by his defensive man, Matt Wilson. 
Wilson up to Angadi. Angadi had a huge goal just moments ago. Curry now. Ball checked out. Curry tries to get it to behind the trailing man, Wilson. Back to Curry. They've got to eat up some time. It's a two-minute penalty on starting goalie David Lee, who has been sensational. The delay of game call with 4.45 left could be the most critical call of the game. Goalie is in the penalty box. He has a field player in there with him, Welsh, so that when the penalty expires, Welsh can come on and play the field part while J.J. Pearl tries to guard the net. J.J. Pearl not warmed up at all, has watched this game, and has been stone cold since his small warm-up in the halftime of this game. Meredith up top, takes a left-handed shot, misses the net. Park tries to slam dunk it. That goes wide. Pearl now getting a little bit warm. Looks good. He played last game. He got some minutes. Looked pretty strong against Philadelphia. Split time with David Lee. Check from behind on Clodson. The offhand with the hold gives it back to the turbo. They've got 48 seconds left. They're going to have another shot. They're going to test J.J. Pearl here. Driscoll checks it in. Clodson doesn't get it. Meredith, great save by J.J. Pearl. Big save by Pearl. Kronberger tries to waste time. He just flips it up to the corner. It goes into the lower box seats there. 29 seconds left. Meredith again will test J.J. Pearl. Dwayne Jacobs comes on. He'll have a high shooter's position on the left. Right-handed shooter is Driscoll. Looking across. Easy goal for T.D. Ted Dowling. The Wild Bunch. It starts the goalie's right. J.J. Pearl has to go all the way across and try to make the save against Dowling. He just sweeps it in with a left-handed shot. All tied at 11. Three and a half minutes to go in the game. Hi, I'm Johnny Bench. You know, to really understand baseball, you got to speak the language. Did you get all that? I didn't think so. That's why there's Baseball Weekly from the editors of USA Today. Baseball Weekly gives you the lowdown on the majors, minors, and colleges. Each issue is packed with team reports, box scores, and stats for every game, plus tips for fantasy leaguers, collectors, college top 25 poll, and the clubhouse for younger fans, too. Call this number to order one full year of Baseball Weekly. That's 44 issues for just $35. You'll also receive your choice of any Major League Baseball team hat or a Baseball Weekly hat, a $10 value, and it's yours free with your paid order. Sound good? Then call today. Get one full year of Baseball Weekly plus your free gift. But hurry, this offer is limited. So call now before you're called out. Baseball Weekly. It speaks baseball's language. 27 left. Big penalty. We said it might be the biggest penalty of the game, and it... It still has the potential to be because David Lee got called for a delay of game. He goes out. He was the starting goalie, played every minute of this game. They scored, Detroit did, on the penalty to tie it at 11. With less than four minutes to go, Baltimore could have held on one 11 to 10, but now they'll have to score again. It's all tied at 11. Detroit playing for sole possession of first place in the National Division. Baltimore playing for their playoff life in the major indoor lacrosse league for 94. Canabine, the good-looking rookie, beats two players. He's all alone. Coming up against Pete Park now. Rolls in for the right-handed shot. Where's the trailing player? He looks up for help, finally gets into the cylinder, but defensed beautifully by the Turbos. Welsh in the Canabine. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. They better check it out. Jeff Jackson finally sees it. Eight seconds left, do they know? Gravante doesn't. Now back to free. He sees it. He takes a left-handed shot just to reset it. And it's corralled there by Dietrich. Roy Condon blows the whistle. Steve Dietrich, very intense. Skip Lickfuss knowing it's all coming down to the final two minutes and 30 seconds. This could be the season for the Baltimore Thunder. The Turbos potentially on their way to the best season ever in Detroit because they may challenge a team from Buffalo that people thought just could not be beaten. They lost to him 17 to 16 earlier this season, and they are anxious to play him the last game of this season. Pete Park finds rope. That 
could be the backbreaker on David Lee. Great screen. He really didn't see it. Watch him wrap it around the defense. David Lee does not get a good view of where it's coming from. He didn't have any vision on the stick, and it just beats him. Now the ball goes to right. Watch David Lee as it, the shot comes to park, and he wraps around two defenders. Lee never really got a good shot at where that shot was coming from. He never got a good vision on that thing. And Pete Park played the screen beautifully. Three goals for Pete Park. Five goals for Dowling. That's eight goals between them on the 12-goal offense of Detroit. One and a half minutes left. Baltimore, the last gasp effort. They're not mathematically out of it, but this will make it tough on them. That means New York just has to split the series with Baltimore, and they will be a playoff team against the Philadelphia Wings in the American Division. Driscoll, slam dunk, rope. Baltimore came so close. David Lee put in probably the best game of the season. He got called on a delay of game, and that turned out to be the factor that opened up the offensive opportunities for this high-powered turbo offense. Look at the great opportunity to get in close. Driscoll takes the feed and just redirects right in over the shoulder. Beautifully done. Good ball movement for the turbos. They now lead 13 to 11 with a minute left. It looks like it'll be all alone in first for Detroit. Pete Park will eat up some time. How about 6'4", 225? Marino says, I gotta go get it. He checks the clock. Butch has got to go out and push the action. 14 on the shot clock. Park moving it against Butch Marino. Both players have hat tricks on the night. The timeout. Timeout called by Shane Sanderson. Good call. And with three seconds left on the shot clock. It's like Dean Ciccone is going to get a two-minute penalty, so he'll spend the rest of the game in the penalty box. It's a blue timeout. The ball will be restarted here with a full reset for 30. It'll be a red ball. Red ball, five on four. Well, when we come back, the final moments of this one, the Detroit Turbos on their way to becoming in sole possession of first place in the National Division. Shot! 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 Introducing Tiger Shark Personal Watercraft. They just naturally get people excited. In the preseason, I don't get out much. But come spring, there's nothing more relaxing than a little walk in the park. All men are created equal. Some just work harder in the preseason. Dean Ciccone goes to the penalty box for the final 34 seconds. Will it be enough? They've got to score two goals. Baltimore does a tie. They get one right there. Rope. Timmy Welsh between the legs, bouncing off the feet of Dietrich. Dietrich tiring. He's gone the whole way. 29 seconds left. Baltimore has one no, goal before they tie this one up. Welsh rockets the shot the in low. It ricochets off the, the feet of Dietrich. Stops. And it's that is goal five. number 12. They are one down. It'll be the rookie, Paul Canabine, as we look at Timmy Welsh. The rookie Bruce. facing off in the absence of Bill Durgle. Welsh's second goal want? tonight. But the young rookie you has possession. to get possession it? of this right. faceoff if, they have, if they're going to have a chance. Oh, Biggest oh, faceoff of the night, obviously. Ball squirted between the legs of John Lance. He picked up by Freed. Timeout called for Baltimore. So as soon as they got it in their stick, they called timeout. Freed redirected it, but they had already called timeout. So they will have possession. 25 seconds left on the clock. 
will have a chance for another shot. John Tucker and Skip Lickvis. Tucker, one of the greats in this league and in field lacrosse. All-American to Johns Hopkins. Yeah, Member of the world team again this year. Plenty time. And hey, listen, and, and we got to crash the pass. We got to crash the pass. Pull the goal. Yeah, we are. Okay, so we're going to put one in. Listen to talk. Whoever gets shots, shots being taken, jump. Whoever shoots it, let's put it on the ground. All right, All right here's what I got. Here's what I got. Ricky, Ricky, Ricky you're down last. Jeffrey, you're up. Lindsay, you're over here. Tim is in the middle. If we lose it, go after the ball. Who's in the middle? Paul Canavy? No, Jeff. This game is very tough to call plays in. It's really an instinctive league. Everything happens so fast. Any coach will tell you that. Basically, what the coaching staff, Lickvis and Tucker, did for Baltimore is put their best shooters on the field. They've got Wills, Ricky Freed on the left, Dixon and Marino on the right. They've got six players on the field. They've got six players on the field. Welsh! They've got six players on the field. Only that one, two, three, four. Oh, I'm sorry. Stupid me, right, folks? No goalie. So they pulled the goalie. Put six players on the field. David Lee is on the bench. No goalie. So they've got all their shooters out there. Will's the left-hander, and they've got the opportunity to put their man-up play out there with Jeff Jackson in the center. And all they want is a good shot. You heard Tucker say, put it on the ground. There's a ground shot. Off the feet of Dietrich, it'll go back to Baltimore. Whoa, very close. 18 seconds left in the game. Baltimore needs one to tie. This could be the season for the Baltimore Thunder. Wills, 16. They'll start it down to Ricky Freed. They want to get a good shot up to Welsh. Bounce shot, tie game! Hat trick for Timmy Welsh, nothing but rope, and this one is deadlocked. They pull the goalie, six on five. They score two goals in the last minute to tie it up. Welsh comes in, puts it on the ground like Tucker said. It bounces up over the shoulder. Watch Dietrich come in low. The shot goes down and comes up high on the bounce. Beautiful shot, and here's the bench reacting to the tie. What a game for Baltimore. Coming in 0-5, this could be the third straight dramatic upset on the deuce in the major indoor lacrosse league. Eight seconds left. Timeout on the field. Detroit will have one more shot. They call a timeout. They put their shooters on the field. They don't want to pull the goalie. They send Dietrich back. Well, Timmy Welsh has come up huge. Skip Lickfuss now with Tucker, talking about defense. Welsh has three goals, scored the last two to put this one into a tie. He scored the last two goals in the last 30 seconds. Hey, 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 come here, come here. If, if they don't, if they don't, they don't look at the ball so much. Don't play the ball. Watch Cal, watch Cal, watch Cal. Well, they all have faith in this coaching staff. Even though they're 0-5, Skip Lickvis inducted in the Hall of Fame this year, coach of the national champion club team in field lacrosse. So we're a potentially sudden death overtime game here with eight seconds left. But let's watch the man-to-man -man play here. Tucker talked about don't follow the ball, play the man. It'll be inbounded by Meredith. Meredith tries to roll backside to Driscoll. Driscoll now tries to go all the way in. Slam dunk! Oh. Jacobs came flying across the crease. Watch him come from the left. He comes in, takes it left-handed, and beats David Lee. He never should have gotten the shot. He beat Kronberger as he came flying across with his great height.
beautiful job. Jacobs at 6'1", 200, but very long in the arms. The Wild Bunch has sealed another win. 14 to 13, it can't be more dramatic than that. The play started out front. The focus was on the players out front. Jacobs comes across the crease, wins the game for the Turbos. We'll be back with final comments from Joe Lewis in just a moment. ESPN2 wants to crown you king of the hill. Rule the mountain for an entire week of extreme sports in the Canadian Rockies. Snowboard, downhill, hella ski with the extreme team. Five kings will reside at the Chateau Lake Louise. And kings don't have to be men. Let them eat cake. To enter, call 1-900-535-KING. 95 cents per call, no purchase or phone call necessary. Or send a postcard. Must be 18 or older. Tonight's major indoor lacrosse league game on the deuce is brought to you by Coors Light, the official beer of the M-I-L-L. -L. Coors Light, check it out. By Adidas, the official footwear of the M-I-L-L. -L. Adidas, the brand with three stripes. And by SDX Lacrosse Equipment, official equipment supplier to the Detroit Turbos. No question, one of the most dramatic games of the year. Ted Dowling becomes the player of the game with five goals, four assists. We talked about him being the leader of the Wild Bunch. He was tonight. And what a game. In the last 30 seconds of this game, three goals were scored. Two by Tim Welsh of Baltimore to tie it up. And then, with the clock winding down, here comes the offense for the Turbos. Across the middle comes Dwayne Jacobs. He shoots before he lands in the crease. That is a good goal with two seconds left to win this game. Again, Kronberger trailing behind him. Jacobs takes it over the shoulder, beats David Lee in the corner. David Lee had a sensational game, could not stop this shot. Beautifully orchestrated. Couldn't have found a better offensive play to win this one for the Turbos. They now are in sole possession of first place in the National Division. Next week, the Buffalo Bandits seek revenge in Boston against the Boston Blazers. The Blazers, the only team to have beaten Buffalo in the last 23 games. You'll see it March 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. O'Neal, the star to watch there. But tonight, the star was the Wild Bunch, led by Ted Dowling. Pete Park, three goals for him as the team celebrates maybe their biggest night in the last three years. A huge game for the Turbo. For Christy Lee, I'm Lee Felsbo. Thanks for watching. See you next week for more Major Indoor Lacrosse.